With Smash Brothers Ultimates release quickly approaching and seeing many character predictions online, it got me thinking a lot about what characters could be in and what characters that I personally would love to see in the game. I don't agree with a lot of the popular additions that people want in the game to be honest, such as Bandana Waddle Dee. The Kirby games in my opinion have plenty of representation in the game and that just feels like we're scraping the bottom of the barrel just to find characters that would fit. When I think of Smash Brothers, I think of it as a celebration of so many iconic game series and characters where many series get together and have representation to duke it out. For example, Cloud represents the Final Fantasy game series, Snake represents Metal Gear Solid, Ryu represents Street Fighter, and Mega Man represents, well, Mega Man, and etc. I think the inclusion of these fighters that I just mentioned opens up the doors to say that really anything is possible for Smash Brothers. That said, in this video I will be going over my Smash Brothers Dream roster with my top 10 most wanted character inclusions, including potential movesets for each character, stages, the music, and possibly taunts, etc. The characters that I am listing are in no particular order, well except for number 1, but they all played a special role in my life growing up with video games. A lot of my choices will be very far-fetched on their chances of being included, but if I had Smash Brothers my way, I would try to represent as many game series as possible for variety and the games would feel complete to me with these characters. I have provided links to the channels that I got the footage from for this video, and they will be located in the description. Please go subscribe to them as they have awesome content. Now, without further ado, here is my top 10 Smash Bros. Ultimate Dream roster characters. We'll start with the obvious one that everybody wants and everyone knows should be in, Banjo-Kazooie. It's no secret that Banjo-Kazooie played a huge part in the Nintendo 64's life. It was a gorgeous platformer with an awesome soundtrack, a variety of colorful levels, secrets, and characters. I personally enjoy this more than Mario 64, and the nostalgia for the glory days of the Nintendo 64 always makes me think of Banjo-Kazooie. Banjo-Kazooie has a perfect moveset already laid out for them with just the moves that they learn in their respective games. From rat a -tat rap to claw swipe, to Beak Barge, Beak Buster, shooting eggs as projectiles, or using Wonder Wing as a, an invincibility. Wonder Wing is what I think their final smash should be, and it would work much like Sonic the Hedgehog's Super Sonic final smash. They've got plenty of taunts at their disposal, and their victory pose could be them collecting a jiggy. Luckily, their moveset is really easy to decide. As for their stage, music, and emblem, I think the stage should be Spiral Mountain with the Spiral Mountain theme, and I think that their emblem should be a Jiggy. Luckily, I am not alone in wanting them in the game, and I am crossing my fingers that with the fans wanting Banjo and Microsoft being open to it, and also having characters like Snake and Cloud in it, which I would have never thought possible, I think it's very likely that we could see this do in the next iteration of Smash Brothers. And while I am making a dream roster, I would be happy alone if the only new character we got from here on out was Banjo-Kazooie. Next up is another one that fans have been wanting, Waluigi. Now I know I stated earlier that I want characters that provide different game series representation. However, Waluigi is my favorite Mario character as it turns out, and I believe he is unique enough to bring something new to the game. It feels weird that he has been confirmed as an assist trophy and not in the game, considering that we got Daisy as an Echo Fighter. I don't have a problem with Daisy, but I feel like it was an odd choice between the two to include in the game. Waluigi seems like the only one left out of the roster for Mario now, and I think his inclusion will make the Mario side feel complete, unlike some of the other basic enemies like Dry Bones or Monty Mole, etc. Not only is Waluigi's moveset easy, but some other extremely talented person actually made Waluigi playable in a Smash Bros. mod. I highly recommend you check out what Waluigi would look like in Smash Bros. in a moveset showcase video from Mario King 64 DS. This is where I got the footage for Waluigi that you see now. He does a brilliant job of showcasing this character and includes a link on where you can download Waluigi for yourself. As for the stage and music, there are plenty of Mario levels already covering that, and his emblem would be his signature upside down L. I think Waluigi is perfect for this game and should be included as not an assist trophy. But I digress, let's move on. Next up on my list is Paper Mario. So far these are the characters you've already seen in a bunch of lists already, right? I know, I'm sorry, I, these are actually ones I want in the game. Just wait till the end, it gets a lot more far-fetched. But anyways, for Paper Mario, I loved the Paper Mario games growing up. I didn't expect to, 
But the art style, the gameplay, the awesome music, the story, the collectible stars, everything about it was just so fun and refreshing for an RPG. I'm listing Paper Mario because I would like his game series to have representation in Smash Brothers for more than just a trophy. Not only that, but Smash Brothers has proven that they can make paper-thin 2D characters playable with the inclusion of Mr. Game Watch. I would love to see this replicated with Paper Mario. He has similar abilities to the standard Mario, but also comes with his own unique moveset. His final smash could be using the power of all the stars to wreak havoc onto the stage. He could ground pound, he could use his mallet, and possibly call onto his friends for other attacks. There is a lot of potential here that I would love to see. The YouTube channel Rockafin, which I have leaked in the description of this video, has made their own video going into full detail on what Paper Mario's moveset should be. I highly recommend you go check it out. As for Paper Mario's stage, there are many worlds you could choose from. You could choose the battle theater that is shown whenever Paper Mario gets into a fight, or you could do any of the eight worlds that he has to go to to get one of the stars. The music I would choose for this stage, whichever it is, would be the Tubba Blubba Chase, and I would have his emblem be just the silhouette of his head. I really hope we see some sort of Paper Mario inclusion soon. Alright, next on the list is Bomberman. Man, I am so pissed from the quick tease I received when I saw a little thumbnail saying Bomberman was in Smash Bros. Ultimate, only to learn that he was just an assist trophy. That doesn't make up for him not being in the game, that only makes it worse! <sighs> Here's the thing. I love Bomberman 64. To me, Bomberman 64 was the best Bomberman game ever and one of the best Nintendo 64 games ever. The worlds, the puzzles, the music. My god, the music. I think I could comfortably say that the soundtrack in Bomberman 64 is some of the best, most nostalgic music for Nintendo 64 games. If not most games in general. The melodies are just so magical to me. I really miss the days of video games with the lighthearted magic, and colorful worlds, adventurous music, instead of all the generic, gray, ruined city shooters that you see today. Bomberman 64 will forever hold a special nostalgic place for me, so I would love to see this game and Bomberman in general get representation in Smash Brothers. He has a variety of moves to choose from, whether it's throwing a bomb, kicking bombs, using remote detonation bombs, the moveset writes itself. As for his up B recovery move, I think it would be awesome for him to use a bomb bridge to bounce back up. I think that would just be such a good homage to Bomberman 64 and it would be pretty funny to see. His stage, I would say, would have to be Green Garden from Bomberman 64, with that music included, along with the blue resort theme from Bomberman 64 as well. His emblem could be a bomb and his taunt would be this little victory spin that he does that you can see right here. And that's going to do it for Bomberman. Alright, is everybody on board with this list so far? Good. Let's kick it up a notch. I'm very nostalgic for the games of my past, and I would love to see them represented in Smash Brothers. With that said, next on my list is Leon S. Kennedy from the Resident Evil series. Now hear me out. Resident Evil has had a unique relationship with Nintendo, and with characters like Solid Snake, you can find your way around the gun issue. There are crossbows, electric batons, rocket launchers, and grenades in the Resident Evil series. That said, I grew up with the Resident Evil series, and I loved it. I think it revolutionized the horror genre, and it brought a very unique playstyle to video games. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Uh, Resident Evil, why not Chris Redfield? He's from the first game, etc, etc, etc. While that is true, Resident Evil 2 was the only Resident Evil game to make it onto the Nintendo 64. Not only that, but Resident Evil 4 originally came out as a GameCube exclusive, and was a huge success, and revolutionary in its own right. Not only did Nintendo introduce us to Resident Evil 4, but Nintendo also gave us Resident Evil 1 Remake and Resident Evil Zero. Plus, Leon's my favorite character in Resident Evil, so there. There's no denying that Resident Evil is a classic series, and we are even getting a remake of Resident Evil 2 very soon, which looks amazing by the way. And with Smash Bros. relationship with Capcom, what better way to promote this remake than adding a badass that is Leon S. Kennedy? He could have a variety of moves and outfits, the Raccoon City Police Department uniform, or his look from Resident Evil 4 or 6. The stage could be the entrance to the mansion in Resident Evil 1. Now I know that's not in line with Leon, but it's a staple for Resident Evil. That's just like, you think Resident Evil, you think of that mansion entrance. The theme music that would be in this stage could be the remixes of Raccoon City, Tyrant Battles, and Save Rooms. I think it would be cool if his emblem was the umbrella logo, 
and he already has plenty of taunts in the later games. So yeah, I think Leon has a good case for being in, and should be. Alright, next up is probably going to be my most obscure character, but I loved this game series and this character growing up. I'm talking about none other than Gex. Gex Enter the Gecko was one of my all-time favorite games growing up. Gex 3 is also great, but my love for Gex 2 cannot be rivaled. Gex was a wisecracking pop culture reference machine, and Gex Enter the Gecko had an exclusive extra level on the Nintendo 64 that other versions of the game didn't have. There was also a Game Boy Color version of Gex Enter the Gecko. Gex's games were platformers that had him traversing through the media dimension, a hub world for a bunch of other television and movie parody worlds. The game has aged a bit, but I still love it dearly. The different worlds, the music, the collectibles, Gex's jokes and outfits, truly a great game series that I wish would get representation in Smash. He has a variety of moves, including a tail whip, a spring jump, which I think could be used as a down attack, and he also has the classic forward karate kick. I think he could hold on to the edge with his tongue like he did in the games, and shoot projectiles like fireballs and ice balls. He could also enter the arena by warping in like he does in the main game. His emblem could be a paw print, and his stage could be the main media dimension hub world, which then warps you to other sections like other worlds. I think that would be super cool. His victory pose could be when he collects a remote, and the music could be the media dimension theme. His final smash could also be when he turns into Godzilla Gex, in a parody of Godzilla, of course. He could then just stomp around the stage and smack people up, much like Giga Bowser. <sighs> Making this video is hard. I want this to be a reality and this game to have representation of Smash Brothers so bad. But what can you do? On to the next. Speaking of representation, as I said at the start of this video, I view Smash Brothers as a celebration of amazing game characters and franchises all colliding, such as Nintendo Classics, along with Sonic, Snake, Mega Man, and Cloud. You can't be the ultimate brawler without some other classics. So with that being said, the best way to encompass the greatest gaming icons of my gaming career my next picks are going to have to be third-party characters that best represent other gaming consoles. So, since we ripped that band-aid off, let's start with the PlayStation. Now, I cannot think of any character more fitting to represent the PlayStation days than their old unofficial mascot, Crash Bandicoot. What Sonic is for Sega and what Mario is for Nintendo, Crash Bandicoot was for PlayStation 1. The Crash Bandicoot game series is such an amazing game series, and it still is to this day. Nintendo had an exclusive Game Boy Advance Crash game series, and if you haven't picked up the remade Insane Trilogy, I would recommend that you do so immediately, because it is an awesome way to relive that series. Which, by the way, it is available on the Nintendo Switch. Crash Bandicoot is iconic. His games are magical, the music is awesome, the levels are unique, they're gorgeous, and not to mention challenging. He also is ready for Smash Brothers with tons of moves to boot. He has a series of moves that work, including a face-first ground pound, a forward A spin attack reminiscent of Mega Man's forward spin, a neutral B spin attack where if you press it repeatedly it could continue, he also has a fruit bazooka projectile, and a handful of taunts and victory poses. I think his final smash could be that when you acquire three of the Aku Aku masks, you become invincible and just take out everything in your path. His emblem could be the Aku Aku Mask, it could be his face, a box, or a gem, any of those work. And I also think he could enter the arena like he does in Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, where he just like warps in Terminator style. His fighting stage could be the Insanity Beach stage, which is the first level in the very first Crash Bandicoot game, and I think it could have the classic Crash Bandicoot theme along with it. Whew, I would be so happy if Crash Bandicoot was in this game. Alright. Now that PlayStation has been represented, next would have to be Xbox, right? And who else represents the Xbox other than Master Chief? Halo is a classic, and it revolutionized online console gaming for first-person shooters. Originally, the thought of Master Chief in Smash Brothers was hard for me to picture, but then I took a look at Samus Aran, and I was like, oh yeah, an advanced spacesuit a Spartan could fit, that works. Master Chief has a variety of smash attacks at his disposal. For starters, his forward smash could involve him taking out the classic energy sword and smacking enemies left and right. 
His forward B could be a sticky grenade, much like Mega Man's sticky bomb. His neutral B could be a plasma gun or the needler, and the rest could just be like punches and kicks. We all know Spartans have a mean right hook. I think Master Chief would be a great addition to the Smash roster, and it would fill the gap of the Xbox representation. Seeing as how Xbox and Nintendo have been playing nice lately, I can dream that it's actually possible. I think his stage would be the original Halo, where you can see it like wrap around, and there could be like a big battle in the background happening with the Covenant and the humans battling, where you would see like warthogs, dropships, and ghosts and banshees. I think that would be super awesome and a great aesthetic. And obviously the music for this stage would have to be a remixed Halo theme song. That would just be epic. His emblem would be a Halo, and I think this would be a really cool and way better representation for the Xbox than Minecraft Steve. Okay, so I've been a gamer all of my life and have many great memories from every gaming outlet. We've covered PlayStation, checked off Xbox, and now the only logical thing left would be PC gaming, right? Well, the best memories I have from growing up and gaming on the PC are from the Half-Life series and Counter-Strike, which means, you guessed it, I would love to see Gordon Freeman in Smash Brothers. Anytime I see anything from Half-Life 1, I get hit right in the feels. This game is such an incredible adventure, and I've said this a lot, but it truly revolutionized first-person shooters. Even its sequel, Half-Life 2, I feel is responsible for all of the ragdoll physics and graphics that we have in video games today. I would love it if we could see the Half-Life series represented. I would opt for the basic model of Gordon Freeman in the hazard suit from Half-Life 1. He's got a fury of attacks if he used for Smash Brothers. I would say his main A attacks for me would all include his iconic crowbar. There could also be a bunch of different projectiles to choose from for his special B attacks. I would say that his down B could be the gravity gun, and it could work like the villager from Animal Crossing's projectile grab. For example, if Link throws a bomb, just take out the gravity gun and fire it right back. God, I wish I was in charge of this. This sounds so cool to me just thinking about it. His stage could be the test chamber where the inciting incident of the whole game of Half-Life takes place, and the stage could come alive and have that incident play out, teleporting you to the planet of Zen and other places in the Half-Life universe, where you could see the aliens and ah, it would just be so cool. I think obviously his emblem would be none other than the classic Half-Life Lambda symbol, and the music for the stage would be a song called Nuclear Mission Jam, which is from the Half-Life games. If you play it, I think you'd recognize it. You may think I'm crazy, but this version of Smash Brothers to me sounds so, so, so epic so far. Well, we're finally here. We have made it to the number one pick. We've covered missing Nintendo classics and other gaming platform icons and a bunch of other game series that deserve representation in Smash Brothers. Now I'm going to tell you my number one most wanted character to be included in Smash Brothers Ultimate. I'm talking about none other than the star of my favorite game series of all time, the Prince from Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. My god, saying I want Prince of Persia, the Sands of Time to have representation is an understatement. I love this game so much. It is so nostalgic for me. It's captivated me for years. It's just everything. The atmosphere, the characters, the storytelling, the twists, the platforming, the combat, the ability to manipulate time, the music, all of this. I would opt for the Sands of Time character model of the Prince, with potential Warrior Within and the Two Thrones costumes as alternates. I think having the Prince of Persia as a character would be so unique. Not only would it pay homage to one of the best video game series of all time, but his moves could vary with different combat techniques and use of his sand powers. In one hand he would have a sword, and in the other he would be holding the Dagger of Time. Ah, oh, just thinking about it, it's just so cool! I pictured his neutral or down B attack being his ability to stun and freeze an opponent in time briefly, as you see here. He has a unique block, he can counter, and I think his recovery B move would be really cool if they could pull off looking like he is using the Dagger of Time to rewind time and include that sound effect. If they could do that, that would be amazing. Prince of Persia was a very successful game series. It got its own movie and had a successful exclusive Nintendo Wii game. Everything was great for the Prince of Persia, until Assassin's Creed came and just ruined everything. But I definitely wish Prince of Persia The Sands of Time would get represented in Smash Brothers. I know it's even more far-fetched than Master Chief, 
but I would love to play as this character so much and it would bring a whole new series to the table. The prince's stage would be the hourglass room with the sands of time in the background, eventually getting released and teleporting you to different locations like the island of time, etc. The music I would love for this stage would be the Tower of Dawn from Prince of Persia, the sands of time. Oh, play that music right now and tell me that that's not epic. Oh, this, I really wish he was in this game. His emblem would be the Dagger of Time, and his final smash would be, well, take a look. And there you have it, everyone. That is my Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Dream Roster Editions. If these 10 characters were in the game, I literally would feel complete with Smash Brothers. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and leave a like so I continue to make videos like this. And tell me who your top 10 dream additions to Smash Brothers would be in the comments. I would love to see what everyone else thinks. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Take care everyone.